This video is about scope. We're going to talk about what scope is and two of the main types of scope in MATLAB. So when we say scope in computer science, what we mean is an isolated realm in memory where a certain list of variables is saved or remembered. So that's kind of a lot of words, but let's try to make an analogy of this. So we're already used to this idea of scope in our everyday lives. However, it, it goes by the name of context. We only know certain things based off of their context. So let's say, for example, I have a certain bubble of when I'm at home and a certain bubble of when I'm in college. Okay, So it's very possible that you know multiple people named Jason. So let's say I have a friend named Jason at home. This is Jason at home. And let's say I have a friend named Jason in college. So depending on where I am, there's a certain scope of knowledge that I have. So if I'm at home and someone is referencing Jason, that's one particular person. If I'm at college and someone is referencing Jason, I'm not going to be thinking about the Jason that's at home. I'm going to be thinking about the Jason that's in college. And then let's extend this to say, let's say I'm on vacation. And I have no friends named Jason there and someone references Jason. If I don't have anyone there that I know is Jason, then I'm going to be confused. I'm not going to know who they're talking about. So in this example here, I have three different scopes of knowledge, three different contexts of knowledge where I remember certain things based off of where I am. The first main scope is the command window scope. So as we remember, the command window is just one of the parts of the MATLAB console that allows you to type in expressions and receive immediate answers. And you can also use it to call other functions. And so in essence, the command window has its own scope. It has its own bubble, its own frame of memory. So anytime we are creating variables inside of our command window, those are saved inside of the command window scope. The next type of scope is called function scope. And by function scope, I mean that every function as it's running opens up its own spot in memory where it saves its own local variables that can only be seen inside of that frame of reference. So for instance, let's say I have a function called myFunk. As soon as I call that function, and as soon as it starts running, it opens up its own spot in memory, which I'll denote with this rectangle. So inside of that, as the function's running, any variables that it creates is only seen inside of that function scope. One important thing to know about function scope is that as soon as a function is done running, the only thing that is saved outside of that scope are the outputs. So all the other variables, all the other intermediate variables that were created inside of that function are forever lost after that function is ran. This will make more sense in the next video when we talk about tracing a function. So let's look at an analogy for function scope. So by this time in our lives, all of us have probably been exposed to some sort of online homework platform. Like for math, there was my math lab, there's stuff for chemistry, there's stuff for physics as well. So let's say one day we are doing our physics homework online. And so let's say this is my beautiful computer screen. And let's say in this problem, they wanted us to calculate the kinetic energy for some car that's moving. So by the way, just for your reference, it's not really that important, but the formula for kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity, velocity squared where it's important to note that in this formula, the mass must be in kilograms and the velocity must be in meters per second, okay? So, but let's say in our, um, so let's say in our online homework scope, right? So online, they gave us that the speed is, let's say 65 miles per hour, sure. And let's say the weight is 
Um, I don't know how much a car weighs. Let's say 2,000 pounds. Pounds. All right. But we want to input the kinetic energy. All right. So what do we do? So those aren't in the correct um, units that we wanted. Right. So we have our scratch piece of paper. So we pull out a scratch piece of paper here. Let's 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 do blue. Let's say we have blue paper. And so what's the first thing we're going to do? First, we have to convert all of those um, values to the ones that we need. So our speed, we need to convert to meters per second. And our weight, we need to convert that to kilograms. OK, so let's say on our scratch piece of paper, we do that. Um, so let's say our speed, we calculate that to be whatever it's supposed to be. Um, and our mass, we calculate that to whatever it's supposed to be as well. The values don't really matter. And then lastly, what we're going to do is on our piece of paper, we're going to plug in those certain values. Okay. So let's say, so I plug those in and I don't know, let's say just for the purpose of the, of the exercise, let's just say our kinetic energy came out to be 10. Okay. We're just going to go with 10 just because I like that number. So what's the next thing that we do? So we place, we place, we, we transfer our value from our scratch piece of paper over to our computer screen, right? And then we click submit, we click save, and then we're done. We get it all right. And then what do we do with our scratch piece of paper? We're done with physics. So we throw all of that away. It's gone forever, okay? So then let's say the next week, your friend asks you, oh, hey, hey, Cantuan, what, what was the speed in meters per second that you calculated for that problem so like that long time ago? Would you know? Of course not. You, you threw that scratch piece of paper away, right? That after you finished working on your scratch piece of paper, you threw it away and that scope is no longer there. That's the same thing that happens with functions. After a function is ran, the only thing that's remembered are the values that are transferred to whatever was calling it, right? So I don't remember all those intermediate values inside of my scratch piece of paper. However, I could go back to my computer and see what my final answer was and what my starting inputs were. 